Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mobile Fire Challenger series. My name is Rapid. Joining me once again is Azaraki Dragon. We'll be getting into our third game of the night. Starting things off for us tonight is going to be Complexity Gaming taking on a team that has seen some ups and downs. Most recently, an up picking up their first win in MCS. It will be Team Tempest. What do you think about these teams tonight, Azaraki? Uh, these teams tonight are both pretty strong. Uh, but I think the fan favorite is probably going to be going towards complexity, especially with Mega Zero on their side now. He has returned from vacation, I think, a week ago, and ever since he's gotten here in MCS, he's been one of the most popular players that we have here, and rightly so. I mean, he's an extremely strong player as well. We see his Renekton always gets banned out against him, and if I had to predict any bans, that one I would pretty much guarantee. Yeah, we are going to see uh, probably that Renekton ban. I mean, if you give Renekton away, I think we all know what Mega Zero does. When it's up like 3v1 and uh, I think he, yeah, he's 3v1 versus Curse Academy on EPS, so you don't want to see that anywhere. First ban right off the board. Not going to be seeing that Renekton from Mega Zero. Oh, yeah. I can, you know, anyone probably could have told you that uh, the Renekton was going to be banned against them. So, no, not a big surprise there, but let's see what we can. What we have in terms of bans towards Tempest. Now, they did recently pick up Geek Desu, actually um, picking him up from Team Tower Dive. So, Geek Desu now on Tempest instead. So, uh, we'll have to see what they ban against him. It looks like we have an Elise ban as well. And we've seen Elise really uh, just a whole lot earlier today uh, doing very well. And even though she suffered some pretty slight nerfs, actually, and even we had Meteos over here saying, you know, it wasn't a very big nerf. She still feels the same way as before, but the only the biggest difference is that you can't repel outside of her, of the circle of repel range. So other than that, she's still an extremely strong champion, and her damage hasn't been changed. Neither has the majority of her kit. She can still stun really well. And we've actually seen Elise is either picked or banned in every single game tonight. So still a very highly contested champion, even though she did just receive a new round of nerfs. So maybe it'll actually take a little bit of time to uh, sort of see the full effect of those. But we'll also get a chance to see a few other, uh, you know, maybe different champions. There's still that Master Yi on the board. Got a whole new rework. So shout out to Riot for doing a great job with that, making him look sick. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if we decide to see him here tonight. Uh, it's going to be the, uh, the first game between these two teams of, I believe, the entire tournament. So I haven't faced one another before. And going up against one another now, I mean, they've had a chance to kind of see one, another ga one another's games. And I know Complexity is really, really good about uh, taking time to review opponents' uh, match history and, uh, you know, take a look at some of their strategies, plan things out. But as is, they'd give the first pick Thresh away to, uh, to the guys over on Team Tempest. Now, I don't know if Devasion is just like, oh my goodness, guys, it's first pick. We have to get me my support, or if it's just because it is that really strong support champion. But uh, they did lock that in immediately. We saw it last game. It's the Kaylin Nunu combo coming out from Complexity. Oh, yeah. Caitlyn Nunu is extremely strong, where Caitlyn is a pretty strong late game carry because of the fact that she has such a long range. But the biggest thing that she lacks in terms of being an AD, in a late game AD carry is some sort of steroid. She has headshot, which is pretty useful, but it, it, it occurs a little bit too scarcely, you know, every six auto attacks. If you're standing in a bush every three, but at the same time, it's still spaced, spaced out a little bit too much. With Nunu, she gets a big speed, bo speed buffed. And that really helps her carry in the late game, it helps her do even more damage, and it even helps her with her positioning, which is already pretty easy because she's got one of the longest auto attack ranges in the game. And where someone like Vayne has her silver bolts as a steroid, we also see Tristana who is a great late game carry, she's got rapid fire for her sort of speed boost, that's her steroid. And with Nunu now in the game, that gives Caitlyn a great steroid coming into the late game. And not only that, but Nunu as a champion himself isn't just used for the blood boil. He's an extremely strong counter jungler. He's a very strong jungler. He can shut down a lot of people very easily by reducing their attack speed and movement speed with his two slows on both Snowball as well as his ultimate absolute zero. So I really like seeing a Nunu pick and a little bit surprised that he wasn't banned out. Yeah, I'm kind of interesting to see no one actually picking Lucian. He is available, but uh, of course, he's not quite available just yet. He has been blacked out there, so won't be seeing him here tonight. 
cannot wait until they unlock that champion because uh, I can't imagine we're going to have to wait too long before we see him here in MCS. So uh, it's going to be the Ash lock-in there for, for Baby Zeus. I mean, he's going to take that away. I mean, Zephix, we've, uh, we've been told to call him like Kate Fix several times because Caitlyn is his main. He has like 350 games of Caitlyn so far this season. But uh, going with an Ash, you really pick up Ash if you want that uh, little bit of longer range than most AD carries as well as a huge engage. And uh, when you look at the Jarvan pick as well as Thresh, I mean, that's just engage written all across the board. With the last two picks, I I'm guessing we're going to see a little bit of a, a common theme here amongst the picks here for Team Tempest. And wow, we, we see an Ezreal as well as a Fiddlesticks picked up. We've seen Fiddlesticks earlier today as a really good support. Ezreal's obviously going mid and probably really likes his Ezreal mid. He's played a lot of that quite recently and it works really well because he is a majority of a caster. Um, with the way Ezreal works as an AD carry is that he does most of his damage through his Q. He can kite around really, really well. And that's something that allows him to go mid because he has one of those big escapes that he can use if there's ever a gank. And he doesn't really need a support to bail him out in that sense. Now, looking at Fiddlestick's support, Fiddlesticks, you have to be careful against him, but you also have to be careful playing him. One of the sh biggest shortcomings of Fiddlestick's support is the fact that he's very, very squishy. So if you're going in for a fear, but you just can't land it right, or maybe you land the fear, but your, uh, your AD carry can't follow up fast enough, then you're going to get focused, and at that point, you're going to go down pretty quickly. So it's a little bit of a balance about when to fear Fiddlesticks and when to be fear. Uh, when to have fear when you're playing fiddlesticks so uh, th there's a little thing right there and i want to see how mia does it so I, I think i've seen him play a fiddlesticks a uh, couple times before and he's pretty good at it so uh, let's hope that we can see that as well he's going up against thresh and ash so it is sort of a counter to this hard initiate if something were to happen if there was an arrow that goes out on a mega zero he can run interference stand right in between ash and thresh and use his fear and that will at, at the very least give mega zero or sorry, not Mega Zero, Chooper, enough time to vacate wherever that is, and it will save her life, or save his life. He's the person playing, but he's playing a female champion. Oh my champion, goodness, but... locked in, last pick for complexity. It's going to be the best Riven NA. Mega Zero playing that up there in the top lane, unless probably just wants to run mid lane Riven. But once again, it's also double AD coming out from complexity. This is a strategy that, I mean, it was common, just kind of initiated over in Korea, made its way over to the NA challenger scene. Complexity was just like, we're running that strategy. And they've actually run it in five out of their eight games now in MCS. So if you're going up against complexity, you kind of have to mitigate that. You can actually run it with maybe a Varus in place of that's Caitlyn. Ezreal is really sort of the anchor there in the mid lane. But uh, yeah, you gave away basically their pick perfect team composition. Lattimortis loves running Nunu. I mean, he ran Elise a couple times ago. That was banned out. So going right back to the Nunu pick, this is an absolutely picturesque lineup for the side of complexity. When you look over Team Tempest, we talked about their AoE and their engage. They really still have that in the uh, amplification from uh, Vladimir's Hemo Plague from Geek Gone Mad up in the top lane. Gonna be pretty nice, but they're gonna have to stack up a team fight to get all of their things, all all of their uh, their ultimates, their moves, their damage, all in one place. Whereas if you're uh, if you're complexity, you don't ever actually want to, to team fight. You can push down objectives, get huge pressure early on with double AD, and uh, keep in mind you have extremely strong comfort picks as well. So a high likelihood of just winning out your lanes outright. Yeah, one of the biggest things that's going to play towards Tempest's side in this game is that they do have a Zed pick. And against two AD carries, we know that Zed is a very powerful assassin. So if he can get off the right initiation, if he can make sure that his death mark goes off without a hitch, he might be able to kill Prawley, he might be able to kill Trooper before they have too much of an impact on the fight. And all the meanwhile, we have an initiation from Zephix with the Ash Arrow, or maybe from Jarvan, or even Thresh. There are so many ways that they can initiate and sort of run cover for the Zed to just drop into the back line, that it, it might just work out for them. We'll have to see how they can actually play that team comp, but that's something that does work in their advantage. Now, we know that a double AD, sort of that AD carry mid, and as well as the AD carry and support, are, is a really strong combination, and I really want to see how well they do with that. And since they also have a, a Riven for the top lane, that is so much AD, I'm expecting to see a Black Cleaver on at least one of these champions, because... Uh, the thing about something like Last Whisper, it gives yourself some extra armor penetration. But with Black Cleaver, you lower the armor resist. You lower the armor of whoever you're fighting against, and that allows the rest of your team to do more damage against whoever you're targeting as well. So that is a really strong pickup. Is on top of that. 
All right, we are going to go into a quick little commercial break, but it's going to be really interesting to see how p really strong picks from Complexity go up against the very AoE teamfight-centric composition from Team Tempest. We'll have all those games for you when we come back, but do want to give a quick shout-out to our sponsors. It's I Buy Power, Razor Academy, and Fatality Gaming Gear. Stick around in the chat, and make sure to subscribe to be eligible to win a Razor Black Widow keyboard as well as a Fatality Gaming Gear headset over the course of the broadcast. So stick around for that. We'll be right back with Complexity Academy, with complexity taking on Team Tempest here in the Mobile Fire Challenger series. And welcome back, everybody, to the Mobile Fire Challenger Series. We are here in week four, day number three, the last day of the week here for us at MCS. I am Rapid. With me is Azaraki, and we'll be getting into this game between Complexity going up against Team Tempest. Now, Tempest, an interesting pick and ban phase. They got picks they wanted for their team composition, but they wound up giving away Complexity a very strong lineup. I mean, this is pretty much, you know... You, it's like when you think of a player, what's the champion they play, and you just pick this lineup right off the bat. Double AD as well. I mean, working out very one for them. Expect to see maybe a 2v1 to take down a very early turret into dragon, into turret kills across the map, and a very strong lane matchups as well. Um, uh, not actually sure how we're going to see that work out, but it's really going to depend on this level one. We should be able to get everybody out onto the rift here in just a second. We should, and we didn't actually mention anything about the summoner spells earlier, so let's go through a couple of those at the moment. We don't see anything that's too out of the ordinary. So so far, Zephix on Ash has picked up the cleanse. That's going to help him basically kite a lot more, and that's one of the biggest aspects of Ash's kit is the fact that she can kite quite a bit. She has slows on all of her Q auto attacks should she decide to activate that. So it's very strong kite ability, and the cleanse just helps her do that because the way you counter kite is to either have really high mobility yourself or have a lot of cc to make sure that they can't run away from you in the first place now in order to counter the cc she picked up cleanse so i do like that pickup on the part of zephix now 
We also see Thresh. We have an Ignite there as well. That's been something that's been increasingly popular to take on support champions, especially I've seen Thresh take it quite a bit, is the Ignite. And that just helps him lane out a little bit, get the edge during the early learning, early laning phase. And sometimes it's not even just to secure a kill because the damage on Ignite is oftentimes enough if you involve it with a, cup, with a little bit of poke that it will take people down quite a bit and it'll help with... Okay, complex uh, complexity's Lada Mortis is going in for a ward. He's actually gonna get caught out here. Yeah, went in for that ward, taken down the auto attack. You'll notice that for Nunu, he actually goes for boots first. We actually do have a death sentence to dash away. Valor first, skilled up there, my Mega Zero. He's gonna be able to get out alive, but Lada Mortis dying for that ward, giving the kill over to Ash, and uh, if she wants, she can just go ahead and back on the base, and that's exactly what she's gonna do. Zevex going back there, we'll be able to pick up boots and potions, most likely, head on down to that bottom lane. Uh, gotta say, when you're looking for, uh, when you look for AD carry itemization, getting that early start, actually no, going for, straight up for that longsword, not wanting extra sustain in lane, it's going for, uh, you know, just pushing power. We'll head on up to top lane, so we're looking to counter out this complexity 2v1. You can see that uh, with actually Mega Zero top lane, the 2v, the, the dual lane for complexity are actually going to go down bottom. This actually could be a nice reaction to not only the fact that they know that KWR is starting at the blue buff, they actually could A seal away the red with uh, MIA. What's he skilled first? MIA hasn't skilled. If he skills Drain, he and Super are going to try to steal away this red buff. If he actually goes with either Fear or Dark Wind, then they're just building for a lane build. And it looks like with that Drain skilled up, we are going to see a red buff steal away for the dual lane on complexity. Mega, Mega Zero, Zero gets though. caught out, however, by a death sentence. And that is another quick kill on the side of Tempest. They have two early kills and both just a little bit too too aggressive poking in. Complexity is doing right now. Mega Zero and Lottimore just both getting taken down pretty quickly over there in the enemy jungle. So hopefully they can get their play back into the favor a little bit. But looking at some of these lane matchups so far, we have Crawley playing Ezreal against Baby Zeus's a Zed. Now, uh, that is a really good Zed player, I have to say, but at the same time, before... Oh, wow. Yeah, we he... already have Geek Desu going low. He's going up against a red buff Caitlyn. Now, anytime you get like a... It used to be the cheese would be like a phage Caitlyn. You'd come back into lane with that off of, uh, you know, some early kills and people just wouldn't be able to do anything against you. That was back when phage was a lot stronger and so was Caitlyn. This time around, uh, red buff kind of doing the same thing, getting that slowdown. Uh, can't actually lane against that, so... Yeah, this is where we're going to really see the change in patch 3.10 because at the very early phases of the game, you actually have a 60 armor bonus, almost doubling the amount of armor that these turrets have in the early game. So even though Super and MIA were beating on that for, uh, I don't know, several auto attacks, only wound up taking off a couple hundred HP, so not all that effective. Death Sentence lands on a Mega Zero there. He's going to get flayed backwards, can't Valor away. The damage coming off. Pretty much uh, the uh, the frost shot on Zephix's Ash is going to fulfill the same slow idea that uh, the red buff on on Super's Caitlyn will do. Still getting in there, pushing down on that bottom turret, but the minion wave is actually evaporating pretty quickly. Not actually able to damage that turret all that effectively, and this could be a real hit to this early turret pushing strategy. I also love having that red buff on Trooper because Caitlyn is already re really reliant on auto attack poke. She's got such a long range that she can really just throw out auto attacks over and over and over again, especially with a headshot proc. And with the red buff, that's just going to do even more poke damage. And on top of that, if there was sort of an overextension by anyone on Tempest, she can punish that really hard because of the red buff. The red buff basically slows whoever she attacks with auto attacks as well as giving the, giving the extra little... Uh, d damage over time in true damage, so very, very strong on Caitlyn, and she's already doing a very good job of trying to outlane her opponents with that red buff, and we can see already they're pushing really hard onto this tower. In the top lane, we do have an engagement, however, as Zephix gets taken down pretty low by Lotta Mortis, he's going to keep going in for it, there goes the last auto attack after the snowball, and he's going to be able to pick up the kill. In the meantime, Mega Zero just trying to drive out uh, Davison over down there as playing Thresh. Yeah, Devasion uh, trying to come back in the lane, won't be able to make it back there. And a great lane, bottom lane, KWR going to get taken down. Drain now, Fear on to Geek on Mad. Damage down on to Super. Does he have Barrier up? It looks like he will wind up going down there. Flashes the pool, but it will be the last auto attack to pick up the kill. Drain from MIA though, for the counter. Support getting the job done, MIA. The dominant performance there on Support Fiddlesticks. 
All right, let's take our attentions just a little bit to the mid lane. Actually, in top lane, we have a pretty far dive. It looks like they're just trying to proxy farm uh, quite a bit, and that really helps them out quite a bit because Zephix, it's hard to do anything against these two guys in lane, especially when they're Mega Zero and Lotta Mortis. Oh, the death sentence lands. A lot of more is in so much trouble. Mega Zero there for the assist. Ward in the bush by Devasion. It's gonna be Mega Zero over the wall. Ignite actually on a lot of borders, but Mega Zero forced to flash over the wall. The flash from Devasion. One auto attack will pick up Mega Zero. He goes down. Now it's a lot of more is trying to run away. There's no slow from Ash. But there is a double kill as uh, the slow and the assist coming in there for Baby Zeus. So as I was going to say before, if we look towards the mid lane, Prawley is about 10 CS up on Baby Zeus at the moment, and most of that is just because he is Ezreal, and he can poke out Baby Zeus really, really easily. And pre-level 6, there's not really too much that Zed can do about it. He can throw out a little bit of his own harass, and he also has some ranged farm if he uses his Living Shadow. Now, on the other hand, Prawley can just keep throwing out those Qs over and over and over again, especially now that he has a tier of the Goddess. So that's a really good item for Ezreal, especially if you're going for the blue Ezreal. So he's just going to be able to spam that over and over and over again. In the meantime, Tempest looking to take this top tower. They might be able to get it. Mega Zero wants to stop them. And Mega Zero throwing down the Ignite, going in, going to be able to get the Q combo there. Won't be able to pick up the kill, only level 4. Noah uh, not going to have any, uh, any Blade of the Exile or Wind Slash able to pick up that kill. Still getting that level 5, he's going to get level 6 here in just a second. The Blood Boil actually going to give him a nice steroid there to defend the turret. But with only 95 HP, it doesn't matter how much armor you give the turret, it's going to go down on this push. So Mega Zero getting in there, needs to either go in or go out, because right now going to get engaged on turret, will go down Death Sentence as well. Mega not in a good place, going to get taken out. There he goes down, that will be the 6th kill for Team Tempest, really kind of taking charge of this lane. I mean, there's a turret down for both teams, but taking out Mega Zero, really winning out that 2v1. Oh yeah, they're actually taking this game back into their favor. The gold difference is 800 gold in favor of Tempest, actually, and I don't think a lot of people were necessarily expecting this against a team like Complexity. However, we know that they do have some really great team coordination, so they might be able to take this game back in the mid to late game, and one of the biggest things that's going to be a factor in that is Dragon, and right now I'm seeing absolutely no wards in that vicinity from Team Tempest, so we could very well see an early dragon play, but there goes Trooper, the death mark goes down. Yeah, death sentence on Trooper, Baby Zeus is just kind of picking up that kill for free. And you walk forward and you see a 2 HP 80 carry, you're just like, huh, as an assassin who has like eight teleports, I should probably get in there and do something. Mega Zero though, going in on a divasion, the bait actually a little bit too effective. Mega Zero dodging out there on the death sentence, trying to get back to the bush of safety. Zephyx not level six, so does not have that enchanted Crystalero. Now the slowdown on to divasion, does not have a red buff, but the ultimate coming in there. Mega Zero getting in for the assist. Now it's going to be Zephyx flashing forward. I'm not sure that's necessarily called for. The damage from Lata Mortis means Mega Zero needs to come back in, but Ping is going down. And hey, man, Baby Zeus off the map, looking to come top lane. Not something we want to go in on. Well, that was actually a really good ultimate zero bait from Lata Mortis and Mega Zero. So basically what happened there, Mega Zero went in to try to fight that. And it wasn't so much, okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to secure this Thresh kill, but he knew that the Death Sentence was going to come out as soon as he started running towards Zephyx and Devasion. And at that point, Lotta Mortis just said, all right, they're going to start focusing on Mega Zero, and he can just dash right out of there as soon as the Death Sentence wears off. So the Absolute Zero is going to have a pretty decent channel, and he just picked up the kills that way. So it was a very good play on the part of Complexity over there. However, Mega Zero is still 0-3 right now, 24 CS. He's not doing too well. He's looking to swap towards the mid lane to try to just get back some of this uh, CS that he's missing on. Uh, however, he's going to be up against Baby Zeus once again, and in just a couple of seconds, his ultimate is going to be back up. I, I assume about 15 seconds, maybe, the death mark's back up, but now you're Asher in the top lane. And it's gonna go down there on Super. He's taking a lot of damage. Barrier goes out as well. Turns around for some extra damage, but 3v1, somewhat unfair. Charvin goes for the man dunk. Winds up giving the kill over to Zephyx even still, so the best of both worlds. You achieve maximum gold for your AD carry and maximum manliness for your jungle. MIA goes in with the assassination play! The Vayshin actually take it down pretty low, but MIA goes down the exhaust, trying to get away, does not have any mana. Last auto attack, picks up the kill and the red buff over to Zephyx. Mid lane, we're actually gonna see the death onto Mega Zero. Unfortunately, trying to get a little bit too manly, almost takes out Baby Zeus, can't quite get the job done. And as I said before, Mega Zero just going to have a little bit of a problem in that mid lane as soon as the death mark comes back up. And that's exactly what we saw. Even though Lotta Mortis was there to try to counteract that sort of 
big ultimate play by Baby Zeus, it really just wasn't enough because as a champion like Zed, you have a lot of burst damage, you're an assassin. You can put out a lot of damage in a really short amount of time, and as Nunu, you have no hard CC to really stop that, and even though he could slow the attack speed, slow the movement speed, there's just too many dashes on not only Living Shadow and Death Mark, but it also wasn't really too much in order to tear down Baby Zeus's attack speed, because Zed isn't really too reliant on that. He gets out an, atta an auto attack every now and again, but it's not really the big part of its kit. It's not really what does the damage. So he was able to still secure that gank, or still secure that kill in the mid lane despite the ladder mortis gank. So what I want to see from Complexity right now is basically they just want to start catching people out instead of being caught out, and that's really what I'm seeing from them so far is that they're just playing where the point they're they're getting caught out a little bit too much. They don't have too many forward wards. Actually, I think they only have one or two wards out on the map in general, and I want to see a little bit more of that. That will help him, and that'll make sure that they don't get caught out, which is still the biggest thing in this game right now. Now, for complexity, their early turret push strategy is supposed to get a turret in around the four to five minute mark. And then even, especially if they're 2v1 in top lane, they rotate down to the dragon, take the dragon, and then pressure the next turret. The way they did that this time around is they wound up going top lane and they, they picked up, their, they wound up going bottom lane, picked up the turret there, but then really tried to slow that ball in a different direction. Mega Zero though, going deep under turret, the death mark goes down, but it's not enough pick up the kill, just applying that pressure. Loud Mortis comes in with the ultimate zero. The stun goes up from the Knights to Ash Arrow, but it's gonna be Baby Zeus a little bit out of position. Just ba gets back to his team just in time. So the rest of the team come from taking the dragon, first dragon of the game, going over to Team Tempest. And Team Tempest are about 1.3 gig, 3, 1.3 gig gold ahead in this game right now. So what I wanna see from them is basically just keep on the pressure. They need to keep catching complexity out. And right now, as I said before, there aren't really enough wards out. And that's one thing that's really just hurting them quite a bit. But we need to see more wards out from complexity and you know, even possibly more pinks out from Team Tempest that will deny the ward coverage. And the thing about that is that denying the ward coverage would allow them to catch people out once again. They'll be able to get their own wards out. And they also have a really good team for catching people out. We have Ash Arrows, we have the Jarvan Cataclysm on top of Baby Zeus can really just take a squishy and 100 to zero him. It's a very, very good play by them. And even Death Sentence is a really good ability to use to catch people out. So that's what they need to be doing. Complexity, they might want to start grouping up together a little bit more. Maybe not fighting full on 5v5s because they're still a little bit behind, but they do want to fight more than just a 1v2. And it looks like a MIA going for the oh ultimate right there. Oh my goodness, the manliness. MIA, he's got in with these ultimates, no fear at all. Ends up picking up a lot of kills, 3, 1, and 0 on MIA. 0, 3, and 3 on Shoopers, so they want to redistribute those kills. But hey man, if you're doing the work, you deserve the kills. So Complexity going to kind of have an upside down score in that regard. They're going to be defending their middle lane turn, a four-man push. Coming in from Team Tempest, getting in on there. The Caitlyn Trap's gonna make it a little bit more difficult, but as is the dive setting up here, the turret taking a lot of damage. MIA back into that lane, the fear forcing the pool out from Geek God Mad. That's uh, basically a failed dive there. You can't go for the dive without that Sanguine Pool. Chase comes in, Lattimore is just gonna zone them off that turret. Uh, Ping's going down onto that dragon, because hey, that's where Baby Zeus was. Going down in the bottom lane, probably gonna have to watch out for that for now. And it looks like Complexity, they're starting to split push a little bit, which is another really good decision. And there goes the Ash Arrow, lands on Trooper, but he's too far away to do anything. A nice attempted initiation, you guys. Geek on Mad going in there, pops the Ghost. He's gonna have a nice job getting in there for the damage, but won't actually be able to chase in all that far. The, uh, the uh, slow comes out immediately, exhaust on a Geek on Mad box as well. Not actually doing have anything too big. Uh, just maybe Zeus overextending just a little bit. It will take out Trooper, but another kill for MIA. Yeah, a lot of these kills I've noted, I've been noticing for, for MIA haven't necessarily been kill steals. They haven't been times where Trooper could have gotten the kill, but MIA just stole it. He's more so just been securing these kills. Like right there, we saw Baby Zeus. He just went in a little bit too far. Trooper was dead. There was no way he could actually pick up the kill. So he, he MIA basically said, all right, I'm going to fear you and drain you under tower. And, you know, at the very least, he's able to take that kill back in the favor for his team. Now, considering he's 4-1, and one, I actually want to see a little bit more AP on MIA because he's holding all the kills for his team. And at the moment, he's really going to have to start putting out a little bit more damage because he has all those kills. 
Now, this is one of those big situations where you're going to want to be not necessarily building as your standard support build, but just a little bit of AP, maybe even a Kajas might just be enough. And it still is a gold for 10 item, but it looks like they're trying to catch out Geek Desu. Yeah, Geek, I mean, he's had some rough times, especially early level one, almost going down there in his lane. But keep in mind, he's still able to fulfill that basic job of being a Vladimir. You just run in, press R, and that's, you know, the damage amp leaves the rest up to your team. Lot of Mortis has actually been babysitting uh, Mega Zero pretty hard, uh, especially over the course of that 1v2. Even though that turret did take a long time to get taken out. So Mega Zero not necessarily where he wants to be with that 0-4 score. Riven definitely having a little bit of a rough time, not only in the 1v2, but also in this 1v1 versus Geek Gun Mad's Vladimir, which is 1-1-2, uh, one, one pretty respectable score. Also has those Mercury Treads, not necessarily for the MR versus Riven, but for the, uh, the tenacity that he's not stunned up for quite so long. Indeed. One thing that I'm noticing that isn't really playing in Tempest's favor is the fact that probably these, this entire time we've been seeing, you know, so many fights in the mid lane, a couple catch, a couple people catching each other out in the top lane, but we haven't really talked about the bottom lane, and that's because there hasn't really been action there, but probably has just been sitting there farming and farming and farming and farming. He's got 155 CS, that's just about 10 CS per minute at this point. Very strong from him, and that's really something that Tempest are going to be surprised about once he starts getting back into these team fights. He's got a Glacial, Sh Glacial Shroud, he's got the Man Immune, he's going to start stacking that up uh, until he gets those 750 mana stacks. And once he does that, he's going to be extremely strong. When he gets his Iceborne Gauntlet, he's just going to be able to kite people around all day. And Mega Zero almost getting caught out in that top lane, but he's going to pop his ultimate and go back in. Yeah, he's looking for the kill. The uh, pool comes out as well. He cannot get it quite down in time. The Wind Slash comes out. Ignite not going to be good picking up the kill. Geek Gun Mad going to be able to come out of that one on top. 12-6. to 6. And as Al Chavez points it out, all kills on carries. For, uh, for Team Tempest, no kills on carries for Complexity, which means that uh, even though they did have the turret advantage 3-1, to one, this is exactly what we saw in the gold in the uh, their game versus uh, Team Curse Academy. Just, it was not going their way. Once again, Super actually picked up a kill instead of MIA, getting the red buff proc, the flash, the damage down. will be the ace in the hole for a double kill on Super. So right as I was talking about how all kills on carries versus no kills on carry, Super picks up a double kill off the back of his team being really strong. And so we're looking for complexity to kind of turn those scores around and uh, maybe pick up some kills off the back of that. Uh, but Mega Zero, man, 0, 5, and 2 there on that ribbon. Finally has a BF sword, but going to be feeling it as far as uh, his progression in the game. Not really where he wants to be. And we do keep talking about all those kills being on the, the non-carries for complexity. And even after those pickups, it still sort of holds true. Trooper did pick up two kills, but the reason they were able to win all these fights, the reason they're ahead in gold, just look at the farm differences. We have Trooper, 147 compared to Zepix. He's only got 110. That does give you a, a lot of gold. And a lot of people underestimate the amount of gold it actually gives you. And on top of that, Prawley is just now about to start joining these fights. I, I think he might be done farming up that bottom lane for now. And once he gets in there, that's, that's just going to do so much damage. They, Tempest really needs to watch out for that. Now they are going to push this mid lane turret and that will set the gold difference back a little bit towards their favor. They're still about 2.5k behind, but there goes the turret, Mega Zero. You know, he doesn't have a lot of kills, or he doesn't have any kills actually, but yeah. he's been split pushing this entire game. He's taken the top tower as well as the second top tower, and Lotta Mortis looking for an initiation. Yeah, in the mid lane, the, the initiation is him getting death sentence, throws down the ultimate, immediately canceled, dashed back on out. He's in the hole, blocked out there by Divasion. He's gonna be getting out, and like you said, even though it's Mega Zero kills up in that top lane, two turrets in his name, be able to, uh, you know, still aid his team by winning out his lane pretty hard. Both of those turrets getting taken down. Now it's complexity on the turret push and into this middle lane. No bonus armor for turrets. That goes away at eight minutes with a new patch. So uh, don't really have to worry about that. Mega Seer, whoa, Death Sentence lands. How do you land that? Gonna try to Valor away, but not able to get that out of there. Death Sentence, Death Mark goes down. MIA to go over the wall against the Fear. The Exhaust down on the babies is with the engage on the complexity. A lot of board is going down. It's Geek on Mad. Chasing down on to probably can't quite chase that out but it's a three members down for complexity nobody dying on team tempest probably does not have a red buff does not have those icy mittens unable to get the slows down so he's just got to back off for now five man push in the middle lane off of a crazy engage and a great team fight one out there by team tempest
Speaking of that team fight, we saw Team Tempest, three or four of them were extremely low on health by the time that team fight ended. And one of the biggest biggest parts of that team fight that went in favor of Tempest is the fact, you know, they chased Mega Zero, but they killed Mega Zero so quickly that they just turned around right afterwards and started initiating on the rest of the team where MIA thought they would keep going after Mega Zero, that they would stay there. So he actually ulted over the wall right outside of that, that blue buff cove and he, it hit nobody. That was the biggest part of that fight. They didn't have the Fiddlesticks ultimate. They didn't have the Fiddlesticks fear. MIA, unfortunately, you know, he couldn't predict the movements correctly. And there goes an ultimate onto Baby Zeus. Oh, the Shirelia is used to try to catch it onto him, but the Lantern's too strong. The passageway too dark. No light at the end of that tunnel. Unless you're, uh, you know, just wanting to talk about the light in uh, Baby Zeus's eyes. As soon as he sees that fresh Lantern, he's just like, oh man, the Vasion, you're the best. And there's probably a. Uh, uh, Divasion X Baby Zeus thread made out of that, but I'm not gonna go there right now. <laughs> Where Complexity are gonna go is pushing down that top lady. You got Super up there. Got trying to get the job done and support Fiddlesticks. I don't know. It doesn't look too much like support when you're five one and two. But Shirelia's five speeds and that's uh, Ruby Sidestone. A lot of more just getting in there, trying to get a nice little steal. There's Ward as well, but uh, won't be able to chase quite enough of Blood Boil. Get him out safely enough for now. A Bloodthirster nowhere on Mega Zero, and it's the 21 minute mark. So you can really tell he's a little bit behind in his itemization, whereas Geek on Mad 3 1 and 3 without quite enough for that uh, Zonya's Hourglass just yet. And the next action is going to come down. Respawn of Dragon here in a few minutes, so it won't be all that quickly. But uh, with the ward placement the way it is, Team Tempest setting up very, very well across all their lanes. They have the items, they have the kills on the carries where they need them. And going into complexity, it's really going to be on probably to finish that Iceborne Gauntlet to try to stall the game out a little longer. And one thing I would really like to note is the fact that Team Tempest, just look at, a, look at their builds. The only person who's actually building straight armor is Vladimir. He's got a Doran's Doran shield, which isn't necessarily armor, but it blocks basic attack damage. And he's also got the Seeker's Arm Guard building into his Zonias. Now we also have the Ninja Tabi from Jarvan, but that's necess that's not really enough going against a team with three heavy AD champions. I want to see a, a Locket of the Iron Solari that that actually gives... Uh, does that still give armor? I I'm actually not too sure with this next patch, but either way, these guys don't have enough armor in their builds, especially now that uh, probably he's got 213 farm. 22 minutes into the game, still almost 10 CS a minute. He has a Iceborne Goblin and a Man Immune, just a couple of bonus mana off of getting that into a Miramana. That's going to start doing so much damage, and as soon as he gets that, I think we're going to start seeing him go join the team fights for the rest of his team and at that point there's really not going to be too much that team tempest can do about it mm. yeah i think the big cs thing to talk about is that uh mia's support fiddlesticks has more cs than lot mortis in the jungle he has 68 to 62 right now so uh that slip push uh fiddlesticks getting the job done there's gonna be the shirelli is the engage the flash the fear the cleanse out from zephix to get himself out alive there crazy engaged there by complexity not able to get anything off the back of that. They do have, like I said, those icy mittens on Prali. Try to slow things out. They really stall it out. Baby Zeus continues to split push bottom lane. Zed, a great pusher, great split pusher. Able to uh, maneuver his way back on out to the team. He's going to head back to base. Let's have that last whisper, Blade of the Ruined King. Looking for probably a Tiamat. Coming out next for double activatable items during that ultimate. He got mad clearing out the wave, and that's going to be a stopped turret push there. Complexity, as much as you can say for double AD carries and poking out on objectives, can't get too close because they engaged the uh, the enchanted crystal and arrow death sentences has been landing all game long. Don't want to push in too much on Team Tempest. And we're seeing a very big difference in the ward coverage that Complexity has now compared to the early game. We see so many wards near the mid lane, and that's where I want to see the wards as well. That's really where most of the action is going to start happening, especially since Baron is now up. It's 20, 23 minutes into the game. It's a very viable objective. If a team were to start pushing, if a team gets you know a couple of a champion advantage after a team fight, then they can easily go for the Baron and they could secure that as well. So right now we're seeing a top lane push from Team Tempest. Now the biggest thing is that De Devison, no, not actually going in the back line, but so much poke damage coming out from Complexity. There goes the Death Sands, but nothing actually happening from that. Just a little bit too far away, a lot of Mortises for any action to happen there, but with Crawley and Trooper, there's a lot of poke, and here goes the initiate. All right, the dunk's coming in. KWR gonna take it down for the first 
jungler will go down for complexity. Lana Mortis will fall. Pool in there from Geek God. Maddie's gonna be able to get out alive. It is ignited. We'll be able to heal up just enough to get alive. Last bit of HP. We got Mega Zero going with the flash, the dunk. Even Rippin can dunk. Getting in there. Mega Zero will chase in onto Geek God. Matt has the speed, has the move speed advantage. Turned around for a lot of damage. The damage coming out from Prolly. Chasing in there, lands the Iceborne Gauntlet proc, and Mega Zero pick up the kill. That's uh, going to be two kills for Mega Zero, so no longer Mega Zero kills. Two, six, and four. Not the greatest score, but still able to be effective in team fights. That had oh, yeah. iambic pentameter, by the way. <laughs> so, as I said before, Prawley is basically now in these team fights. He's starting to do a lot of damage, and with the Muramana as well as the Iceborne Gauntlet, that is really huge in terms of his item builds. He's starting to fight with his team, and they're just edging out these fights one at a time. And unfortunately, in that engagement, Baby Zeus actually didn't get the initiation that he really wanted. He didn't actually, he wasn't able to dive into the back line to kill Prawley instantly. And even though they took out Chooper, that's one of the big problems with the double AD comp is that. Trooper died, okay, but Prawley was still there. He was the big threat of that fight. And at, at this point, you know, who, who exactly are you going to focus? Are you going to focus Prawley or Trooper? Trooper, his positioning is really good because he can stay near the back of the fight with Caitlyn's really long range. Prawley, his positioning is pretty good because he has the Arcane Shift, which is on a really low cooldown since he's going blue Ezreal. So who exactly do you focus there? Well, the really big deal is that you need a tank line to go in front of AD carries, or you need the poke and the peel uh, to get that done. Complexity actually have, you know, really great AD carries right now. You got the the, uh, the peel from Iceborne Gauntlet's just able to poke in with that. Like you said, 650 range on Super. But the big deal is they need a tank line in front. Nunu, extremely tanky, has that AoE zone control from Absolute Zero. But Mega Zero being so far behind, now he's got a, a Hex Drinker, and that's really going to help him out against Geek God Mad. They should have picked that up a little bit earlier on, but really wanted that BF Sword a little bit too much. Now, if they can get in there, especially with the AoE zone control, sometimes you'll see the same team composition, but MIA will pick up a Zyra, because you want these huge circles on the ground, and actually uh, Meteos was talking about this early on, where you go Nunu Zyra, and you just have these AoE zone controls that the enemy team just cannot walk into, and that's really going to be a huge zone for this double AD, and uh, hopefully Lattimortis can get that taken down until Mega Zero can be enough of a threat to warrant a little bit of focus himself. We're gonna see the pings going out. Everybody knows where everybody else is. Great ward coverage by Complexity. Even though they've been down a little bit this game, they still have wards everywhere they need to be. And one other thing to note about this game is that uh, Meteos was talking about it before, but it's the scaling of these teams. Now I'm seeing, once again, double AD for Complexity. And on top of that, they have Lauda Mortis playing Nunu. That's a Blood Boil as well as a tank. And there goes the initiation. Yeah, actually, is MIA zoning out the entire team there for Tempest. I would have expected Mega Zero, though, going in. We'll pick up the first kill on Invasion Geek. There in the very front does have Sanguine Pool to get out of this. Alive Pools at the very last second. An excellent peel away from Dragon. You see the crows come out, but not enough AP from MIA to get the kill there. Geek on Mad going to be able to ghost his way out of their alive, or at least Flash. Yeah, he's running Flash Ghost. A lot of Mortis, though, dropping down kind of low here at the Baron. We'll have Consume up in about 10 seconds to get himself some health back there. As it is the Baron dropping down 10, uh, half HP right now. Got Baby Zeus coming in there. Can't get a kill off on Lot of Mortis. This could actually be huge. The dunk coming in from KWR over the wall. Baby Zeus in there as well. Picking up one. The flash over the kill. The second one going down to KWR to uh, Baby Zeus actually. A lot of Mortis or uh, MIA there with Mega Zero. Turning things around. A double for Prolly coming over the wall. That will be a two for one exchange and a Baron buff for complexity. And unfortunately, the arrow wasn't able to steal Baron with the AoE damage that it does. But I want to go back to that last team fight. Crawley landed an amazing ultimate. He basically just sniped out that back line after MIA took them really low. And with a one-man disadvantage, Tempest was all basically saying, all right, well, we can't engage this 4v5. We, we actually have to get out of here. So they were doing that, and they took a lot of damage while doing so. And that basically gave Complexity the go-ahead to start taking Baron. And by the time the rest of Tempest regrouped themselves and said, all right, we can try for this steal, it was, it was already too late. Complexity had already had a really good setup. And on top of that, Prawley was doing an amazing job with his not only arcane shifts to just juke around, go through the walls, and do all that, but he also had great Mystic Shot lands, which helped him do so much damage, kite people around, and once again, probably really making that fight happen for his team. So if there's any way that 
uh, Tempest can get back into this game, they're gonna have to find some way to kill Prawley. Now that's, once again, gonna be really hard because he's Ezreal. He has an arcane shift up every five seconds or so if he lands his Qs. So what, what exactly are you gonna do? Lotta Mortis is also building full tank on Nunu. You can't really dive past a Nunu unless you have some really great gap close because his ultimate slows down your movement speed by so much. So at this point, Tempest need to find some creative way to catch out Prawley that might just be roaming around in the jungle trying to catch people out when they ward, but they need to do something a little bit more creative than just straight up teamfight to win the rest of this game. Yeah, I think they actually have a lot of options when it comes to uh, it comes to being this game. When you look at uh, Team Tempest, they have the kills where they need them. They just need the situation to get that down, and that is not something to, uh, that uh, Complexity are going to give them. They made it through the rough phase of the game, and they have the items that they need. The uh, Muramata completed as well as Last Whisper, Iceborne Gauntlets. The Pope way too strong to initiate it on here for Complexity. Uh, or the Pope for Complexity way too strong for Team Tempest to initiate on. I should say it's going to be up to KWR to get probably the manliest dunk of his life on either Lockup Super, who can then Night Caliber net out, or at least try not to get completely zoned out by MIA. He's really been doing a great job of that over the course of the game. A lot more than you'd expect out of just a standard support fiddlesticks. Once again, out CSing a lot of Mortis in the jungle. I'm not sure if that's like a strategy that Complexity have evolved, but it's going to be pretty effective so far. 5 1 and 8 Dash Arrow goes out right on the Super gets Death Sentence right after the Cleanse flashes away. Will actually survive. He's in the back. Micro back with Ignite goes down. He will follow, but it's KWR. Very low off the back of that, too. There's going to be the Ezreal ultimate. We'll snag away the red buff, but it's a double for Brawly. Still getting in there. The cleanse down as well. Will he be able to follow this up? Geek Tesla continuing to get poked out. He has a Quicksilver Sash that I did not notice earlier on. That will be a 3 for 3 exchange. Very even between both teams off of a great Ash Arrow into Death Sentence combo for Team Tempest. Yeah, and even after a great initiation, Prawley was still unharmed during that entire fight. He was in the back line, lot of Mortis with a great ultimate, basically peeling for not only Prawley, but Chooper as well. Keeping Chooper alive just a little bit longer, that allowed them to get Chooper's damage out. And not only that, but the team was too busy focusing Chooper because he was still alive, whereas Prawley was in the back line. He wasn't being focused at all. Whereas if Chooper was dead during that fight, then people, then the uh, Team Tempest, they would say, all right, Trooper's dead, we just focus Prawley now, and unfortunately that didn't happen, so Prawley once again ending up with all three buffs on the map at the same time. He's still extremely strong, 6-0-3, oh, he has a Last Whisper now as well, and that ignores 35% of the target's armor. And on every single one of those Qs that he's throwing out, you know, every one or two seconds, it's really a huge item for him to get. And he's got a Quicksilver Sash on top of that, so making it even harder to focus him down and kill him. It's going to be pretty hard for Tempest to come back into this game, even though the kill difference is still in their favor. The big deal is three Quicksilver Sashes now picked up on Complexity. I mean, even when you're running double AD, especially against that Vladimir ultimate, you got to get those QSSs out, and it's really going to be a lot against the huge engage. Really, when you're uh, when you're looking to go up against an Ash, any sort of really hard CC initiate, we're going to get the fear out onto KWR. A lot of Mortis with the slowest coming out. A continual poke. MIA now to go in. Takes the Death Sentence out for the, the uh, Dark Passageway. And it's KWR going in there, kind of sacrificing itself himself for the good of the team. One death so far. A lot of Mortis dangerously low, but a double for Trooper coming in off the back of that Mega Zero going in. Still has Wind Slash. Will he throw it out? No, he does not. They're already using that. Baby Zeus going in there. Gets feared out. MIA to fall down. No, still survives. Looking to poke in onto Zephyx. Arcane Shift's not yet available. Flash is in there. Gets the kill off on the Mega Zero. No, the Valor. Brave enough. Mega Zero. Taking it home, able to life steal his health back on up there, but a great follow up the poke from Prawley, MVP of that fight, getting away for a, a what is that, a two for five, full five man ace, and now the ba first base turn of the game to be taken down by Complexity. And even though Complexity missed a couple of ultimates in that fight, namely MIA didn't actually catch anyone in his Crow Storm, even tried to flash afterwards, but the, the, the good thing that Tempest did there was that they backed off as soon as they saw that coming, and they just mitigated as much damage they could from that. However, KWR unfortunately went back in for the fight in a way that didn't really help his team all that much. Now, uh, that classic phrase comes back to mind, I'm Jarvan, I'm helping, but what he basically did there was he cataclysmed in a choke point, so the walls stopped the rest of his own team 
from initiating on whoever he cataclysmed and they were just sort of sitting behind the walls near the tower saying all right well what do we do now we don't really have the range to deal with this and at that point complexity just turned on kwr killed him right off instantly and there goes the main tank for team tempest so at that point there's no good peel for zephix uh, there's no front line that they have to get through in order to kill some of these squishies on team tempest now uh, deviason was doing a good good job of trying to do that but him alone is just not enough and vladimir doesn't have any peel himself and the only other th thing we sort of saw right there was zephix trying to peel as much as he can with his frost shot but unfortunately it just wasn't enough complexity once again fighting a, a pretty good fight they had a couple of whiffed ultimates but all in all it was really well in favor for them the only thing that mattered in that team fight was Geek Gone Mad walking up and Vladimir ulting absolutely nothing. He plays this ultimate, he's like, I want to ult, and then it just goes randomly somewhere else. So, no Vlad ult, MVP Vlad ult of the century right there. Uh, Geek Gone Mad kind of whiffing that one, and even though Complexity, like you said, might not have had perfect ults, they certainly didn't have any that were necessarily quite on par with that one. Um, and without the damage amplification, just not enough damage to follow up from Team Tempest, just not really there. Complexity will back on off here towards the Baron buff. But Team Tempest are in position. And MIA has the the, uh, the damage, but he is looking to get the ult on. There's going to be ultimate from Mega Zero. Looking to get that well, smite spit, smitten away there. Loud of orders with the slow field right at the base. Super very safe there. If are in the back, going to get the slows on to Baby Zeus. The Iceborne Gauntlet to pick up the kill or the, uh, the CC, but it's Baby Zeus going back in. Not even enough damage to break the, uh, the uh, shield. From Lock of the Iron Solari, Super gonna stay alive through that one. It's just gonna be complexity. Picking up the kill on a baby Zeus. It's gonna be the cleanse from Zephix. Can't quite cleanse that uh, that uh, that ace in the hole. It will still find the right hole. And it's gonna be Loud Mortis coming in here. The ultimate's uh, not enough from Frawley to pick up another kill, but Loud Mortis going hard, going deep in the paint, going not far enough to pick up any kills but gets out alive. Complexity pushing in through the mid lane. Have a super minion in there to body block. Going in here for the base, Nexus turrets. It's gonna be Mega Zero getting there. The flash, the one shot onto Ash. Now as Geek on Mad hits a few more people with his ultimate, a four man flat ult, three man flat ult. Gonna be able to pick up absolutely nothing off the back of that. The dive, the suicide, the GG's coming out from Team Tempest. A huge invasion from Divasion to start things off very well for Team Tempest, but just not enough to follow through the win and the second place in the standings. Complexity taking down Team Tempest.